Yeah, Carol Wayne is with us. We're going to do uh, a tea time movie tonight for you and the Mighty Carson Art Players. And did you see uh, Miss Wayne in this month's Playboy? <laughs> Good heavens. She's been on this show for years. And oh. there's Carol. <laughs> Staples weren't enough. They had to use rivets. <laughs> oh, you're in a good... This crowd is wired tonight. Right. Tell you. And I'm not kidding. You don't laugh. We send 100 volts right through your seat. You, are <laughs> you make up for last night. We had a... Uh, undistinguished crowd last night. Uh, How undistinguished were they? Wow. <laughs> Dr. Bergen Evans in the audience. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. After the monologue, little old lady came up to me. Sweet little old lady. <laughs> and she says, they love you. Or I love you, she says. That's oh, what she oh, said. Yeah. It's important well, as a she joke. Was old, wasn't she? she was old. She didn't know what she was saying. <laughs> she said, I love you, but they don't. And I said, who's they? And she said, Smith and Wesson. <laughs> you see, if you don't get the straight line out... The joke goes right down the tubes. <laughs> Doc is obviously off tonight, right? Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> where'd he go, Tom? Do you know? I'm... He's uh, conducting the Detroit Symphony. Wow. I thought he was the, uh, con the conductor of the uh, Phoenix Pops Orchestra. Well, he has to keep moving. <laughs> Anyway, filling in tonight for Doc, of course, is Mr. Tommy Newsom, and uh, Tommy's the only man I know who doesn't look as good as his passport photo. <laughs> you know, let's be honest, Doc moonlights, right? He's got the thing with the Phoenix Pop. Tommy's got a night job downtown. Oh. He, uh, he's an extra in police lineups. <laughs> The news bulletin just came in while you've been seated here. Yeah, it was on the Associated Press. They just found Yuri Andropov, who's been missing, as you know, for five months. They found him on the left lane of the Hollywood freeway. <laughs> we have a great freeway system here in Southern California, right? But those of you from out of town, if you go down the Civic Center in Los Angeles, there are five, what, different freeways that intersect. Right. And if you miss your turnoff, oh. you are in Ensenada, Mexico, <laughs> before you can get back in. Anyway, we, uh, we welcome you to Southern California, those of you from out of town. Um, this is a bizarre uh, state. Let's be honest. You get a lot of... All of the cult, all of the fads start in Southern California, and they have some of the weirdest ethnic groups I have ever encountered in my life. Um, met a guy today who's a gay American Indian. <laughs> he, uh, he scalps ballet tickets. <laughs> and if you're hoping to run into celebrities, we have a world famous celebrity, as I've, I've said before, and I'll probably say again. Uh, World-famous inventor, Dr. Leopold Fechner. That's right. Makes, <laughs> makes his home uh, right here in Burbank. His latest invention is kosher cat food. It's called tender yentles. <laughs> well, I can have a good time, too. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, we expected, I'll be very honest with you. I expected a kind of a subdued audience tonight because this is, as you know, is Friday the 13th. <laughs> a lot of people don't, won't even go out on Friday the 13th. A lot of people think it's very unlucky. I'm going to take my own poll. How many of you feel, how many of you are superstitious? No way! No <laughs> <laughs> guy with a bat on a stick up there. No way. <laughs> How many of you don't believe Friday the 13th brings you bad luck? Okay. How many of you just want to get lucky tonight?
I guess there is something to it on Friday the 13th. I read a, a, today about a black cat who got killed trying to walk under a break dancer. <laughs> yeah, that was an iffy one. I knew that. <laughs> Did you ever carry around a rabbit's foot? No. Oh, as a kid? No. Oh, come on. Did you? What? Did you? Oh, I, I carry one around now. Oh. <laughs> I lost custody of the rest of the rabbit. <laughs> I suppose you all have followed uh, during the past few months the saga of Christine Kraft, the uh, the TV anchor woman who was fired uh, because apparently the station said she wasn't attractive enough, and she said it was a sex discrimination. Well, apparently she won a big award, and uh, they awarded her nearly a third of a million dollars. I think from Metro Media was that the right place? Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a pretty good victory, I think, for Miss Kraft. Uh, also. I think she's going to sue Ted Koppel, though, for having a cuter hairdo. <laughs> well, let's see. The new shows are starting. <laughs> Don't need a blend. Go for it. Uh, NBC's got a new show. Detective shows are back in vogue, you know, after a few years. Well, they have a new one coming up called Limburger P.U. <laughs> It's about a private investigator who can turn himself in will, in, at will into 12 different about to hell with it. <laughs> See, it's Friday the 13th. That's right. That was the 13th joke in the monologue. <laughs> and I'm very superstitious. I should have had 14 jokes. That's possibly right. 12. <laughs> anyway, we'll dig that joke up and tell you later in the show, because it's a good joke. And we want you to get all that you paid for tonight. <laughs> We have a, we have an all-female show tonight, and some pretty, and some, and some pretty talented ladies they are, too. First of all, one of the most versatile actresses, she is really something, and lovely to look at, Miss Susan Sarandon is here yeah. tonight. We have college student Brooke Shields. <laughs> Carol Wayne and the Mighty Carson Art Players. I'd like to to a station. But salute to a station. But before I do that, I also want to salute you. Why is that? Because tomorrow night at the Touchdown Club in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, you're I'm flying receiving... flying out tonight, as a matter of fact. Flying out tonight, and you're yeah. receiving the Hubert H. Humphrey Humanitarian Award. That's that is very true. Nice. Congratulations. Very nice. Very prestigious award. That's right. Should be fun. They have a lot of... Uh... Uh, a lot of sports celebrities there, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a nice evening. I was Washington. with Rich Little the other night, who was apparently going to introduce you, and he was getting some inside facts that only two people in the world knew. I now, hope you didn't... Uh, three people know. hope you didn't sell him the snapshots. No. Anyway, All right. have Here it is. The Tonight Show. Get exciting now, friends. Ready for a big applause on this one. The Tonight Show would like to congratulate our affiliate in Chicago, Illinois. Ah. WMAQ-TV on the occasion of their 35th anniversary. 35 years in Chicago. Really is. 35 years. Uh, I kid Tommy, but uh, this Saturday and Sunday, Tommy Newsom will be at the National Association of Jazz Educators Convention in Columbus, Ohio. Uh -huh. and he will be judging a National Collegiate Dixieland Contest. Have you done this before, Tom? Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're doing it again. How many uh, uh, Collegiate Dixieland bands will there be at this uh, convention? I think they are down to three finalists. Three finalists? Yes, they, they have, uh, they come from all over the country now. There's yeah. many. There are a lot of fine young musicians, aren't there? Yes, they are. They can uh, play any style. Excuse me? They play any style. Yeah, this happens to be Dixieland. Yes. 
Anyway, Tommy will be one of the judges out there. Okay, now. Of what he meant was that they're so versatile, they can yeah, play Dixieland, play they can play jazz, they can play straight music, you know, progressive rock jazz, roll, fusion yeah. jazz, rock yeah. and roll, all of those type of things. I leave anything out? Uh, yeah, weather continues moderate. Well, what? <laughs> weather continues mild? <laughs> moderate. Weather continues moderate. moderate. Film at 11. <laughs> All right, let me talk about uh, R. I. the eye back here. Now, we've gotten a lot of letters from people. We got a lot of phone calls from people who were deeply disturbed. They couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> they were sitting there. They didn't see me. They were looking at this eye over our shoulder. The reason it's there is we thought, well, subtly, yeah. because of 1984, and if you remember the George Orwell book that he wrote back in, I think, 1948. 48, yeah called 1984. That's when he said, Big Brother, the intrusion of government, people will be peeking at you, looking through, and so forth. So we put the eye yeah. up there. A lot of people just sat there like this. And just... <laughs> so we have decided to get rid of the eye. We're retiring the eye. <laughs> See, mixed feelings, some and people. One magic press of my foot. That eye is headed for that big Visine bottle <laughs> up in the sky. Oh. Uh, the big brother is still watching. Takes care of that. <laughs> it was disturbing. I was yeah. looked, looked at the tape later, and I kept staring at this <laughs> dumb thing. Anyway, we just did it to right. see what kind of reaction we get, and we found out. A lot of reaction. It didn't work. Sunday, of course, is the... Uh, not this Sunday. A week from Sunday. A week from Sunday is the Super Bowl. Right. Between, as you know, Washington Redskins, Los Angeles Raiders... Okay. Read in a sports column the other day. You know, usually the offensive or defensive linemen, few people know their names unless you're a real football fan. Those are the guys down in the trenches all the time that do a lot of work, and the quarterbacks and the running backs get a lot of credit. They found that if those fellows have a name, they give them nicknames. Remember, in Los Angeles years ago, and the Rams had the fearsome foursome. Right. Um, in Washington, I think the offensive line is called the Hogs. The Hogs, yes. Right? They call them the Hogs, and that gets them up because, you know, the people yell the Hogs, and those guys at least have some identity. Well, the Raiders' offensive line does not have a nickname. That's a shame. They have no nickname. Uh, we have some possibilities. <laughs> and we can take a vote on this. Uh, somebody put down Attila's Hunks. I like that. Mm, no, I like much. The Cabbage Patch Killers. <laughs> The Macho Nachos. <laughs> the Rodeo Drive, Rodeo Drive Roughnecks. You no, see, that's no, no. nothing, right? No. It's the only one I can think of here is the Bad Astronauts. <laughs> nothing. How about the Cabbage Patch? What was that, Cabbage Patch Cabbage Patch Killers? But that'll be out of style, you yeah, see. Yeah. Anyway, we have no other suggestions. And obviously, we had, had none to begin with. <laughs> we just found out. The audience has spoken. <laughs> As they always do. You learn quickly, yes. don't you? People yes. will always tell you. Immediate. Right. We're going to... Susan Sarandon is here tonight. Brooke Shields, Carol Wayne. We're going to see our old friend, uh, Art Fern. Yes. And a tea time movie for you tonight. And, uh, see? Crowd's with us. <laughs> oh. they, they have spoken again. <laughs> Take the we'll do a commercial. This will settle you all down. And, get, <laughs> and we'll be right back. Chance to catch their friend. Right. <laughs> okay. I uh, mentioned before, I thought Susan Sarandon was one of the best actresses uh, working today. She is... Uh, the versatility. She has played so many different roles. And they remember the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Pretty Baby, Academy Award nomination for performance in Atlantic City. And she's always portrayed a wide variety of people. And she has, her latest picture is called The Buddy System, uh, re represents another departure. Would you welcome, please, Miss Susan Sarandon. <laughs> No justifiable reason for this, but I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> you told me in, in makeup, we, we talked briefly, and you said you hadn't been on the show for a while, and you, you, you got nervous again. Why? We've known each other for a number of years, and you've done this show quite a few times. 
Well, I, I guess it's all the other people that are here, then. It's not you. Don't take it personally. No, I, don't, I, don't. Um, I don't know. I guess just talking like this, you know, you don't know who you're supposed to be. I'm not an expert on anything, so it just... Well, just be you. Just, yeah. yeah that's right. enough for me. Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> More than enough for me. <laughs> you superstitious? Friday the 13th. People say we aren't, but we do the dumbest thing. You know, people will knock on wood. And if you're walking down the street and you come to a crack in the sidewalk... If you can step on it or not, what will you do? Will you it depends if you want to break your mother's back. You see? That's been drummed in since childhood. Would you? So you step over it, right? Yeah. Do you have yeah. anything at all that you're superstitious? I'm superstitious about everything, but I figure, you know, Friday the 13th in 1984, it's kind of like a double negative. It probably means it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, it could, could, could be a wash, couldn't it? Yeah, we could actually have yeah. some fun. Yeah, mo I hope so. <laughs> Most... No, most entertainers, especially in the theater, they say, are very superstitious. They mm. do silly little things. I guess just in case for protection or something. Well, it's kind of magic being in the theater, so you learn yeah. all that, you know. So you got the, the system is called the Buddy... Buddy system. The Buddy system. Mm -hmm. When's that come out? Um, I think it comes out the 20th. And yeah. In a lot of cities, they're kind of easing it in around the country. Yeah. Somebody said this is a little bit different type of thing for you. Well, it has no sex in it, no violence. <laughs> it's a little bit, and, it, and a story, so it's a little bit different than most movies. And, uh... Yeah, do you think there's too much uh, emphasis on, oh, on that yeah. in pictures all the time? Yeah, and it's, a, it's also about um, ordinary, the challenge of uh, the heroics of ordinary life and being no. an ordinary person. And, and it's about um, how loving a friend can be all right and not a compromise and also yeah. i was very interested in playing a mother so um you know all the aspects of motherhood and what that really means and a, a woman becoming independent it's about all yeah. those things little things which may not mean much especially to male reviewers but i think that, no i think uh, it's nice because yeah. i think pictures of interpersonal relationships have, have done very well yeah it's small no one dies and you know it's not but i i <laughs> i feel that um it's important for people, the more that I'm in, involved in massive questions, it becomes yeah. clear that the answers really lie in everyday lives and the way that we view ourselves and the respect we have for ourselves and for yeah. other people. And, Simple and, thing. Yeah. You mentioned playing a mother. I'd yeah. forgotten. I know you played Brooke Shields' mother in Pretty Baby, but it was another picture. King of the Gypsies and also. King of the Gypsies yeah, also. Yeah, we go way back. That's yeah. very strange. But there are different kinds of mothers, you know, and all of these films it's interesting because in pretty baby i really passed her off as my sister i was a very young mother in this film yeah. i'm also a young mother but finally i take more responsibility and people have been asking me you know not being fortunate enough to have children myself and feeling my my physical clock running out what it feels like to wonder if you're going to have children you know that yeah. question does that bother you yeah it does bother me but also um I don't know. I've started to really look at what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a mother in a kind of broader sense. Right. Besides borrowing my sister's kids, um, I, there's something about motherhood and being a woman that has to do with nurturing and taking responsibility f uh, for things outside of yourself and for the future. And I think right. that women... Uh, I, I've been working with a group called Madre in New York, which right. is a, a, has been working with women in Nicaragua, for instance, mm -hmm. who, in trying to humanize what the problem is and trying to reach out um, and say that it's time to end this aggressive, violent nature that we have that I hate to say is somewhat masculine. Yeah. Um, and the concept of being heroic and trying to reach out to other people and asking them to to look in a longer view, to, to mm. fight for the future, you know. And in this way, I feel a little bit like it's generated my femininity mm. and my ideas about motherhood to be able to talk to other mothers and see yeah. what they're doing somebody and feel a part said, of that. Yeah, somebody once said it's fairly easy to become a mother or a father. The difficulty is becoming a good parent. There's, exactly. There's a world of difference in yeah. the two. And when you think of the world as a brotherhood of nations, then in a way, I mean, this sounds kind of 60s, but I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid Are that we have to get 60s? back. That, well, yeah, I'm a creature of the 60s. Yeah. yeah. But I think. Did, that, you, uh, did you go out and did, were you on the marches? Were you oh, on? yeah, I was, a, I was arrested and all of that. But I think now, <laughs> you know, you have to get beyond just peace and love and be practical about it and right. try to find out how to have elect officials. Like, I wonder how many people here have registered to vote. And how many of my friends haven't registered to vote who were from the 60s who were... Yeah. Oh, have you registered of to course. vote? Of course. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> have you registered? Oh, yes. You know? 
Because it's have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check. Just checking. Okay. Have you? <laughs> no, uh, I think that's a good idea. Do you know okay. what I mean? To kind of make it more practical and yeah. to to understand when you pick up the paper that when it says you're destabilizing a government, that it means that your tax money is going into you know starting mm -hmm. wars and things that nobody's declared. You feel strongly about these things, don't you? Only in self-defense. Yeah. The terrible thing about reading and finding out more about the situation and growing up, besides having to go to the dentist regularly, is to, uh, you know, having to take responsibility and do something. It becomes harder to just kind of sit back and unfortunately it gets you involved. And I think that when you're in this business, you can't help but look around, you know. How important is it for you to have somebody else in your life to share all this? Or do you? I have a lot of friends. I don't have somebody that I live with or that, well, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting I mean, <laughs> wasn't crying at all. Do you but need I, somebody to live with? I... I hear you're on the market I was, lately. On the market. Yeah. Yeah. And that you have being, pretty good digs, actually. I, I was being silly. Well, um, you know yes, I mean, I'm kind important. of in the market, but actually I don't find it such so difficult when I'm having a hard time. I find it more difficult when I'm having fun and you want someone to share it with. I mean, when do you... Oh, maybe we should... No, think. no, sure. I think, it's, I think it's good to have somebody share the good times and the bad times. Yeah. I'm kind of used to being... Um, Are you a loner? Private? I'm, yeah, but I just have come to the conclusion that being lonely and being afraid is just the way it is and you just have to keep going on and you just can't pay any attention to it. Do you know what I mean? You just It's like trying to find a parking space. You can't sit outside in the house. You have to keep going around the block. <laughs> Good way to look at it. Not bad. Simplified version of life. Not bad. We have to take a break. Ready to come back. Stay where you are. Time once again, friends, for our visit with one of the mainstays of daytime television, the late afternoon movie host who brings you old pictures and sells anything and everything in sight. Welcome, please, that exciting guy, your host for today's tea time movie, your friend and his lovable Art Fern. <laughs> Freaks, Art Fern here with today's feature film find. George Sanders, George C. Scott, George Hamilton, George Burns, Boy George, and Vibrato, the Wonder Eel, in Andy Hardy gets a Cabbage Patch Kid in trouble. But first, friends, has living in the crowded city got you down? Is your apartment so tiny the only way you can get in your door is by reaching in and deflating your parakeet? Homeowners, is your yard in the city so small that squirrels can only store microfilm of their nuts? Well, friends, then maybe it's time you moved out of the city and bought land in the most exciting new land development in southern Florida. Yes, friends, I'm talking about Yellow Fever Estates. <laughs> yes, friends, we're offering fabulous one-sixteenth of an acre parcels of the most beautiful land an eagle ever pooped on. <laughs> friends, I'm a man of the world. I wouldn't expect you to buy a pig in a poke. I wouldn't respect you if you did. So we provide an aerial photograph of your property right here. <laughs> say this real estate photos do not provide enough topographical detail. Well, then run a hang glider and a Polaroid and do it yourself. <laughs> Speaking of Polaroids, here's the queen of the 60-second cinema herself. And of course, I'm talking about... Yes, holy! Yes, friends, it's our matinee lady who's an expert on Florida. I know how Florida is shaped. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, nobody does. Friends... <laughs> Within walking distance of your property is every imaginable recreational facility. Yes, I'm talking tennis, golf, and an L.A. Raiders cheerleader with poor eyesight and amnesia. <laughs> At Yellow Fever Estates, you're so close to nature that Bigfoot has been sighted in the area. If you don't believe us, this is the men's room key they give out at the local Texaco station. Wow. Friends, Yellow Fever Estates is located on a man-made lake. I didn't know lakes could be made by men. Well, why not? You have friends. <laughs> Yellow Fever Estates, Yellow Fever Estates is a very educational area for your children. They'll learn, they'll learn a foreign language. They'll speak better than I will, first of all. But they'll learn a foreign language when they hear a Cuban fisherman swear in Spanish after a bull alligator bites off his bongos. But friends, when you own a home 
in a yellow fever state, you won't need to purchase a lawn jockey. Because outside your front door is a Seminole Indian up to his nipples in quicksand, begging you to throw him a branch. <laughs> Friend, your property is also located near churches, which will come in hand as you as plead with God to take your life and get you out of this rat hole. But, friends, <laughs> you say you want a hot tub? We'll provide you with your very own jacuzzi, the meal jacuzzi. A man who will make you and your wife squat in the backyard while he pours scalding minestrone on you. Oh, I don't like it that hot. On a clear day, you can see the Glendale, friends. <laughs> Remember, friends, we are the only development of Southern Florida that provides you with both indoor and outdoor plumbing. Yes, here is the indoor plumbing. <laughs> and here, friends, is the outdoor plumbing. <laughs> friends, at Yellow Fever Estates, we expect to have electricity before the end of this decade. But you... <laughs> You needn't fret, so you'll be able to find your way around in the bedroom in the dark. We'll provide you with this. Something we call the headlights nightgown. How do you turn the brights on? I'll give you a driving lesson later, friends. <laughs> right. Yes, friends, right for our free brochure. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. You'll deliver after four to six margaritas, but friends... <laughs> Call our toll-free number. Our operators are standing by. For $50, they'll lie down. But that's another story. Come <laughs> or come to our sales office in person. How do you get there, you ask? How do we get there? I'm wondering. Somebody just asked. <laughs> Friends, you take the Golden State Freeway to the Ventura Freeway to the San Diego Freeway until you come to the Slauson Cutoff. Get out of your car. Cut off your Slauson. Get back in your car. That's right, Friends. Then you drive 362 miles north to the San Quentin Prison Shower Room, elbow your way through 56 nude soapy convicts, remove the loose tiles in the corner, climb into the scroll crawl space below. That's our main sales office. Now back to our movie. Orson Welles, Orson Bean, James Dean, Butterfly McQueen, and Shampoo the Wonder Crab. In Dirty Harry gets his magnum measured. Oh, we're back already, friends. We'll get right back to our feature, the Marx Brothers, the Rich Brothers, the Righteous Brothers, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and Quickie, the Wonder Mink. In the Three Stooges get neutered by a power more. But first, friends, <laughs> let's talk furniture. Is, is your furniture old and shabby? Is your carpeting starting to smell like a non-union slaughterhouse in Pakistan? <laughs> Are you using as a kitchen table the flat head of your youngest child? Well, then maybe it's time you came down to Southern California's leading discount furniture warehouse. Sit on this. <laughs> or as our friends south of the border call it, Casa de Cardboard. <laughs> That's right. All of our furniture is 60% off. How can we do this? Because we cut out the middleman and steal directly from the convents while the nuns are at mass. That's how we do it. <laughs> sit on this, we have occasional chairs, occasional tables, and occasionally a representative from the Better Business Bureau who's trying to shut us down. All the stuffing on our sofas is fire retardant because manure does not burn. We have all sizes of beds, doubles, kings, twins, queens. In fact, our salesmen are twin queens, Neville and Werner. But that's another story. My living room is practically empty. There's not much left in the loft either. Friends... When you buy a sofa from us, you'll have hundreds of fabrics to choose from. Would anyone like to see a swatch? Remember... Remember, guys, all of our love seats are guaranteed. If you fail the score, bring it back and we'll give you the phone number of a woman who'll make your hair stand up like Art Garfunkel. And friends, we'll send you... We'll sell you this complete bedroom set, complete with bed, dresser, end tables and lamps, all for $149.95. How do we do it? Because you get everything you see here, actual size. Wow, what a little cutie. We hope you have a very small wife, yes? <laughs> Friends, you say you can't afford new furniture right now. We'll reupholster your old furniture to look just like new. Everything I have is reupholstered. We did a great job on the cushions. Friends, <laughs> show, them, show them our latest end table. Friends, I'm talking end table. We also carry... No pride at all. Friends, we also carry a full line of clocks, desk clocks, wall clocks, and this lovely antique grandfather clock. When you wish to know the time, simply open this panel. It's 6.15. 
I told him it's either that or the home. Friends, if you're worried, if you're worried about credit, we carry our own papers. We have to because there's no holders in the bathroom. Friends, what about bar stools? Oh, no thanks. I'd rather stand. It's new for you. Look, friends, it's sit on this. All of our furniture is American-made. Foreigners from Taiwan make the furniture, but Americans like me make the money. If you have any complaints, if you have any complaints, and I have one now, come visit, come visit our complaint department. Our convenient hours are 3.58 a.m. to 3.59 a.m., of course, unless we're on a lunch or coffee break. So, friends, here at Sit On This, don't worry about your credit. Got no job? We don't care. Got a bad credit rating? We don't care. Got a prison record? We don't care. Don't expect to pay us? That's when we care. <laughs> warehouse take the hollywood freeway to the harbor freeway to the long beach freeway drive until you come to oh. the fort in the road That's right. <laughs> then friends you go eight more miles till you see the giant rattan cabinet maker trying to break one of the ten commandments on an ottoman that's us now back to our movie gary cooper gary coleman ronald coleman ronald reagan ronald mcdonald and wang the amazing chinese bull <laughs> in king kong makes the eiffel tower rusty so long for now Long day's journey. My next guest, you all know, she's a lovely young lady. And this Sunday, January the 15th, from 9 to 11, she'll appear on Bob Hope's USO Christmas in Beirut on NBC. And she has a new movie called Sahara, due out March the 2nd. Would you welcome Miss Brooke Shields? <laughs> You've been drafted. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. You look good in that. Well, thank you very much. Obviously, the fellows gave that to you uh, during the holidays. Yes, they did. They were all so very, very generous. Actually, this is from the um, executive officer. Hal Perry is his name, yeah. the XO. Mm -hmm. You had kind of a remarkable uh, holiday, didn't you? I sure did. We um, Actually, when we decided to go to Beirut with Mr. Hope, um, it was... It was sort of a last-minute decision. I mean, that's what I understand. We just—he asked me to go, and I thought I thought about it for a little while, and then I thought, oh, I'd be crazy not to accept this. And it was actually the best Christmas I've ever had, and I—I'm yeah. sure it's the best Christmas I'll ever have. Yeah. Did anyone tell you before? Maybe it's not wise to go. One never knows what happens over in that part of that area of the world. Actually, no. No one tried to discourage us at all. Um, I really wanted to go. My mother yeah. and I talked about it. And I wasn't scared at all. I was really? just... You weren't frightened at all? No. I was... I think I was just too happy and too... I felt so proud and so lucky to be able to... to share my Christmas with them. And, you know, many times they said to us, the boys would come up and say, oh, this is so nice of you to give up your Christmas and give up your holiday. And, I mean, they've given me... They gave me yeah. the best present I think I could have ever had. You felt just the opposite. Definitely. Somebody said you did hear a little gunfire. I mean... We saw some... some open fire, but... It was, it sort of was like a, a film or a movie. It was too, too unreal. I mean, we didn't really, didn't Did you register. Ever, have you ever been close to anything like that before? No. Most and people, the first time that they see something or in war, it, it is, you say, Mike, this is just the way I've seen it in the movies. Exactly. It's hard to separate the reality. Mm -hmm. And we stayed, actually, we stayed on the USS Guam. Right. As we were based on the USS Guam, and then each day we would go to various different ships, right. USS Independence and the Kennedy and how all many, the other How many ones. different shows did you do all of that? We did nine, about seven full shows and two impromptu shows. Some, see, some of the ships are smaller. Right. So instead of, we couldn't get all our equipment on it, so we right. would go. And we had just such a great group of people. Did you find that the, uh, the fellows over there, morale was uh, fairly decent? You know, we were very surprised. They were all so, they were very, the morale was very good. I mean, That's they right. were all very happy. And I think what was really wonderful was that they felt so thankful for all the, the support and the help they've been getting right. back from the people here. And I, I told them that I would, on behalf of them, say thank you to everybody because everybody's, That's they've nice. sent them cookies and presents and letters. And That's it's nice. Just they've got them. kind of a thankless task over there. Yes. And it's tough. There's mm -hmm. war and not war, you know, well, peacekeeping mission. It's strange. They're sort of in the middle, but they're, yeah. they're proud to represent our country and they're, they're, they're right. proud to be our boys. Well, I'm glad you made the trip. I'm glad I you had a good time. We'll uh, take a little break. All right, we'll do this, and we'll be back. Thank you, Tom. Anyway, I 
want to mention before Carol comes out that on the show you'll see with Bob and Brooke are, I think, Kathy Lee Crosby, Victor Moen, and Jillian, George Kirby. George Kirby. Part of that trio. Victor Moen. Yeah. She, and Jillian, who's just yeah. so lovely. And um, Julie Hayek, who's yeah. Miss USA, which yeah. she drove the guys all wild. We'll look forward to it. Well, it's not easy to follow any, any one of you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring out uh, Carol. Uh, who's our tea time uh, matinee lady. She was, as we said, in Playboy magazine this past month. And she's also seen in a movie called Surf 2, which is opening in Los Angeles. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> What's the name of the picture, folks? Uh, would you welcome Carol Wayne? Well, it's not... Nice. It's been, it's been quite a while since we have uh, done that, isn't it? Yes, it is. You can count backwards, too. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing today, counting back to see the last time we did it. When was it? Well, it was several years ago. That's right, then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't... I was in Playboy. I am on Playboy. That's I'm right. in the stands now. That you are in the stands, aren't you? Yeah. Why, why, you decide, why did you decide to do that? I suppose they called you and then asked Ask you. Asked me. Asked you, yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to see it, too. I hope you don't mind that I named it 101 Nights with Johnny. That's what the article was called, yeah, because yeah. you had been on the show, I guess, 100 and... Well, 94 time. of them was on the show, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you haven't changed at all. No. So, what else is new in your life besides that? Surf 2? I don't know why they giggle when I mention it. Because there wasn't a Surf 1. And this is the end oh, of a trilogy. I see. There wasn't a Surf 1? There wasn't a Surf 1, and this is the end of a trilogy. Ah. Get it? I thought you were taller. Pretty cute, yeah. Yay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. kind of clever. Yeah. What do, you, what do you play in Surf 2? A mother. Really? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Uh, I'm Annette Funicello, all grown up. Yeah. Yes, you are. I this can't is, swim, This though. is the first time we've had... Uh, this is, I feel like I'm in a reunion. <laughs> really? Bozo meets the bimbos. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We all kind of look like the girl next door, don't we? Not really, no. <laughs> Except not, I probably live next to a gambling casino not in Las in, Vegas. <laughs> not in my neighborhood. So what else is new and exciting? I understand that you... Well, were... come on. How about Playboy? Give me well, a Well, that's break. exciting, yes. I mean, really? I'm... <laughs> Has it led? Has it led to other things? I've got a six-page spread. That's, that's, yes, you do. You yeah. certainly do. <laughs> Interior shots and everything. I know that shows, yeah. actually shows the home and the, the everything. Yeah. Uh, somebody. Uh, the photographer who takes those pictures? Yes. You know, he usually just has one assistant to help him, like, move the lights and stuff like right, that. Right, sure. This guy must have really been good. He had 83 other guys. 83 assistants. Yeah. Sure. Some people are slower than others. Somebody told me you just bought a dog. Clever, huh? Is that true? Yes, about, um, well, it has been that long then. Three years ago. He was a puppy then when I bought him. Yeah? Ten weeks old. I what was on Thursday, and I went out to buy plastic plants. I was really going to cut down on my life, you know, wipe off things. To work. I bought a bulldog puppy instead. Really? Something that needed diapers almost. Yeah. It's... They're built like little bowling balls. But very gentle. Oh, they're very nice indeed. Only old ladies, though, know that they're very nice. They go, I, I know he looks mean, but I bet he's just as nice as he looks bad. And that's the truth. Men are terribly scared of this dog. They go, does he bite? I go, not me. <laughs> Don't figure. <laughs>
Xin chào các bác và hôm nay bên em lại về một chiếc Nissan Sunny số tự động sản xuất 2017 bản XV Premium và chiếc xe thì phiên bản màu đen mặt ca năng thì có mạ chrome nhìn rất khỏe khoắn và chắc chắn và cái con Nissan Sunny này được gọi là xe nồi đồng cuối đá các người chạy taxi dịch vụ cũng rất hay mua xe rất chắc chắn các bạn nhé nhìn nó có độ cứng cáp đấy mặt ca năng này nhìn mạ chrome nhìn chắc rất là chắc chắn và chất Nissan và tổng thể chiếc xe thì cũng còn tương đối bạn nhìn tổng thể là lốp là răng xi nhan tích hợp tay nắm cửa mạ chrome Đây. Đèn hậu thì cũng khá là đẹp XV Premium S Đấy các bạn có thể thấy là xe khá đẹp Xe này biển Hà Nội các bạn nhé Sunny Đèn hậu nhà tích hợp đây lốp đây xin nhà tích hợp đi sang sunny nói chung tổng thể chiếc xe thì phong dáng nó khá là đẹp đấy nó không quá thể thao và cách điệu nhưng mà nó nó rất là cứng cáp chắc chắn khỏe khoắn đấy, nhìn hai lần trước của nó nhìn cũng khá là cứng cáp đèn thì chưa có dấu hiệu của, của súng đây nội thất bên trong tắp bi cửa gương kính chỉnh điện ghế bên trong thì còn tương đối mới không quá nhăn nheo các bạn nhé ghế phụ mọi thứ trần ra ghế cũng còn khá là ok vô lăng Đấy, màn hình Hàng ghế sau thì cũng còn tương đối Da ghế cũng chưa quá nhăn Có bệ tì tay Và có điều hòa Sau Đấy Và tôi sẽ cho các bạn xem đến phần máy móc Rất tiếc là con này thì máy móc nó cũng lại bị Nỗi các bạn ạ Nó cũng có một chút vấn đề Cái hồi 2017 2018 hồi bị ngập thì con này nó cũng tham gia cuộc thi đua Vì vậy là Nó có một chút vấn đề Vì vậy chiếc xe này bị em ra bán với giá là 290 triệu Và các bạn cũng đừng so sánh với cái giá ở bên ngoài nhé Bên ngoài xe xịn người ta bán đắt Nó là chuyện bình thường Còn xe nỗi bán ra rẻ Đây là cái điều hết sức bình thường Không có vấn đề gì cả Ai mua điện sớm với em Và xin chào tất cả mọi người